Hey there everybody, welcome back to another Chem Complete video. We are continuing our aromatic reactions today for the Organic 2 lectures. And we are going to take a look at a very well-known reaction that is used with benzene and aromatic compounds. And that is the friedel crafts alkylation. Now I just want to mention for those of you that may have come across friedel crafts before, there is a friedel crafts acylation along with a friedel crafts alkylation. The acylation is different and we will have our own video lecture looking at that separately. So let's take a look at the friedel crafts alkylation. So what we need to do if we would like to do the friedel crafts alkylation, let's first discuss what we're looking at here. So we're looking at taking benzene and to that benzene we are looking to add an R group, an alkyl group. So we've got something like this. And the way that we do this is with an alkyl halide, so we need some sort of Rx group. And we also use, kind of like with the halogenations, we use a metal catalyst along with several halides. So this is a Lewis acid. This is going to be very good for polarizing the bond up here where this would be partially positive, this is partially negative. We're basically going to create a very good electrophile out of this R in order to get the benzene to react with it. And this is the friedel crafts alkylation. So I'm going to run through the mechanism and show you guys what's going on here. It is important to realize, and this is unique to the alkylation, not the acylation that we're going to be talking about later. There is a huge number of limitations that the friedel crafts alkylation faces. Not that it's not a useful reaction, but there's a lot of different constraints we have to concern ourselves with, and we will talk about those. So let's take a look at how this works. All right, the first thing we want to do, we have benzene here, and we're going to be looking to take on an electrophile, and that electrophile is the R group. So I have R, X, and what the aluminum is going to do is it will coordinate with the X. So if you think about it, aluminum has three halogens already here, so we could represent these as chlorides, right? But these are some sort of halogen. And then the aluminum, because these halogens would be partially negative, the aluminum is going to be partially positive as a Lewis acid. Remember that Lewis acids accept electrons. They are electron acceptors, not electron donors. And so the halogen that's here will be an electron donor to the aluminum. So the partial positive, this partial negative, they kind of align, and this X will take its electrons, and what we end up with is Al, I'm going to use Cl in this case, but it would be X if you're using some other halogen, Cl4, and it's got a minus charge, right? So that also leaves, so we also have R plus. So this is really a carbocation that we form. Carbocations are very good electrophiles. And that's important because we want very strong electrophiles in order to get benzene to sort of give up its aromaticity for a brief intermediate session while it's adding this group. And in order to do that, we're going to require a very good electrophile. So this would be the first step here, right? And then I would have R plus. So the aromatic ring will send out some pi electrons to go after R plus. Keep in mind if something else is on here, you would need to consider the directing properties. So is it a meta director or an ortho para director? We don't have to really worry about that if it's just benzene at this point. And so the next intermediate that we come across here keeping in mind this would be resonance stabilized, is I'll just go ahead and add the R at the top, right? We now have added the R group, and we've got the carbocation, which could go through resonance stabilization in all these points. So the wrap-up, if you remember from other lectures, is that we have to return the aromaticity to the ring itself, uh, it will not end up adding something and not going back to an aromatic state. And so our negative base here 
will go after the hydrogen and these electrons will be returned in order to reform the aromatic ring and at the end of the day I end up with an alkyl group that has successfully been added to the ring. So that's perfect because we've seen nitro, we've seen soft, uh, sulfonation, we know about halogenation, but one of the big things that we haven't really considered yet is how to get these R groups on here and this is a first uh, look at that when we do the fetal crafts uh, alkylation. So I mentioned that there are limitations to this reaction so let's discuss some of these limitations. Number one, this reaction needs a fairly activated ring, so at least benzene at a minimum. And that means we cannot have, so no electron withdrawing groups, and in parentheses we'll put meta directors on the ring. You will not get a reaction if you end up with a ring that has a meta director on it, a strong electron withdrawing group. So, i.e., for example, right, if I have the nitro group here and then I attempted to do a fetal crafts alkylation where I did R, okay, X, A, L, C, L, 3, this would not go because of the electron withdrawing group on there. The deactivation is, uh, the, the fetal crafts alkylation is very sensitive to the deactivation state and so when we put these deactivators on the ring uh, it's going to be problematic so number two oops number two we cannot have any amines so no amines are allowed and this will include okay so includes something like NH2 even though that's an activator um, and the problem with this is that the nitrogen is going to act as a good nucleophile and it will interact pretty readily with the catalyst. So it doesn't really have to do with the carbocation itself, though some people may think about this attacking the carbocation, which is a good thought process. But even before your carbocation gets up and running off the ground, you will have this compound with your partial positive and these will very readily coordinate with the aluminum and so what you end up doing in this case is you're you're essentially going to ruin your catalyst and your catalyst is required in order to create the good electrophile the carbocation and we create this very strong charged bond at this point that would look something like this right and then I would have the aluminum here with the plus uh, wait a minute I'm sorry not the plus with the minus right the nitrogen donated the lone pair so it's plus the aluminum would be minus and then CLs would also be here and so this is almost you're starting to look at ionic type property plus minus when you have this coordination so this would ruin the catalyst that you need in order to perform the Friedel Crafts alkylation. So no electron withdrawing groups, no amines. One of the other issues that we face is polyalkylation. So meaning many alkylation cycles when we attempt to do this. So when we say polyalkylation, if I go through the Friedel Crafts once, and just imagine I start with benzene here, right? So I undergo the Friedel Crafts reaction one time and what ends up happening is I activate the ring when I put on this R group. Well now I have this in solution and I also have benzene in solution. So which one is going to act more reactively or more readily towards the next alkylation? Well this is sort of neutral, right? It's not deactivated but it's not activated and this is activated. And so if it's activated, that means that this is more likely to undergo a second alkylation and a third alkylation and so on and so forth because it's activated. So it would orthopara direct as a activator, but you most likely will end up, and this is kind of a practical 
scenario if you're in a lab you'll end up with multiple alkylation sites it's not going to be isolated to one or very rarely will it be um so a couple of limitations that we're looking at here you can see that this is certainly a useful reaction but it is useful only up to a certain extent because you're going to run into a lot of problems if you want electron withdrawing groups if you have a means or anything else like that on the ring um, and there is actually one more thing that we should talk about or discuss so you could add this on as a fourth um, and that is because we're dealing with carbocations you will very often have rearrangement of your carbocations so for instance let's say that I have a group like this right and I'm gonna add this using the fetal crafts reaction so uh, if I have this I would have the ALCL3 and I'm just gonna use regular benzene aromatic ring so what's gonna happen well once the aluminum tetrachloride has coordinated together I'm going to be left with the following CH3 CH2 and then this CH2 would have a plus that's a primary carbocation not a very stable situation not a likely situation and so let me move this over here uh, what we would consider is the fact that before the ring ever gets to come and attack this carbocation there would be a hydride shift that would occur right and that promotes the secondary carbocation which is going to have better stability so your carbocation will really rearrange itself into this oops that should be a CH3 into this form right here and this is what will be attacked by the ring so the ring would come after this carbocation so when we look at this If I were to draw out this reaction and consider it, so let me put this back up here, CH3, CH2, and this is not just exclusive to the propane, you could have all sorts, if, it, if there is a carbocation rearrangement that's possible, it will occur before adding to the ring, so very difficult to get primaries on there outside of ethyl or methyl. So what you might be hoping for in this type of reaction or what you might be desiring is the following you're looking to get this compound out of the ring and the problem is this will not occur because the rearrangement is the most probable pathway in order to promote stability of that carbocation intermediate and therefore what you're really going to end up with that we just showed is a rearranged alkyl structure okay so rearrangements another important point rearrangements will often occur and I should just mention because we're in the in the moment of talking about carbocations here uh, vanillic carbocations and aryl meaning the carbocation is directly on the aromatic ring not one space away which would be benzylic both of these are not stable carbocations. So in other words, I could not do a fetal crafts reaction where I say, okay, I'm going to add a aromatic ring that's got a chlorine using ALCL3 and then hope that the product I come out with would be something like this, where I would have two, oops, it's a little small where I would have two rings attached not going to happen because this intermediate is shut down these are not stable so you're not going to be able to do any type of reaction like that so those are the primary points of the um, alkylation there is one side reaction kind of like how we looked at uh, reduction of nitro groups and replacement of the sulfonyl with a phenol when we had the OH group so I just want to mention briefly if you have a ring and in the benzyl position of that ring so in other words I have an R group here right and I've got a couple of carbons 
So we'll say that this is CH3. We just said how we probably couldn't add this, all right? But let's say, uh, maybe we'll say we had something like this, right? Okay, so the benzyl position, which is this one right here. So if this position, if the benzyl position has, whoops, sorry about that. If the benzyl position has a hydrogen, you can oxidize. And what you will get, it's a strong oxidation, what you will get will be a carboxylic acid out of this. Alright, so for instance, if we were to take a look at this, now this is dependent on the fact that you must have, you have to have hydrogens here. So if I had a group like a T-butyl group or something where the carbon that was directly attached to this ring did not have a hydrogen, this would not work, right? But so for instance, let's say that I have that compound that I had above, and it doesn't matter how long this is, this will always work in the same exact way, provided this carbon right here has a hydrogen on it, at least one, okay? So what's going to end up happening, you use a strong oxidizing agent. I tend to use KMNO4, okay, with acid, you can use H3O plus, HCl, whatever you want. KMNO4 with acid, you can use some of the other strong oxidizers like uh, Na2, Cr207, or others that we've learned. And what you will get in return is a carboxylic acid in the place of the alkyl chain. And so all of these, all of this stuff gets cut off, and you just replace it with a carboxylic acid. Okay, so that's a useful reaction that you would want to know or have handy. Um, and just so that I clarify the point here, to give you an example, here's a T-butyl group, right? So the carbon, the benzyl carbon directly attached to the ring here does not have any hydrogen. So this carbon does not have hydrogens. And so if I attempted to do an oxidation on this one, I would get no reaction. It would fail. All right, so that is the Friedel Crafts alkylation. We'll take a look at the acylation next. Hopefully, you guys found this video useful. Please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will be happy to take any questions in the comments section if you have them. I will try to keep these videos coming. Thanks for learning with me, and have a great rest of your day. I'll see you guys soon.